Hey, Picture Perfect people, welcome back to the Picture Perfect channel, giving you all the information that you need to know about the care of your lawn and different things that you might have been wondering about but couldn't find an answer for. Today's video is part one of a two part video series that we are doing about the different colors that you might see in your grass. So, we're going to break down for you not just what causes these colors, but what it means for your lawn long term and if it's something to be concerned about and how you fix it. We're going to really go into detail on this, which is why we're breaking it down into two different videos. Videos. Part two will be coming out next Tuesday, so be sure to stay posted for that. And if this video is something that's been out for a while, go check it out as soon as you finish this one. We all know that grass is supposed to be green, right? That's why you invest in fertilizer in the first place, to keep it that healthy green, beautiful color that we all want to see in our lawn. But sometimes that can change. It can turn brown, red, purple. Those are the colors that we're going to be focusing on today, as well as green. And then next week in the part two video, we're going to be exploring yellow and blue and black and white. So there's all these different colors that you can see, and I'm really excited to be able to break it down for you guys. So before we get into it, you know the drill by now. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and comment below and let me know, besides green, what is a color that you've seen in your lawn this year? Hopefully you haven't seen anything but green, but most people do. So give me a shout below, let me know what you've seen in your yard, and keep me up to date on anything else that's going on with it. So before we can really get into these more unique colors, let's first kind of go back to basics and discuss green grass. might remember from your middle school biology class, in the most simple of terms, chlorophyll is what makes plants green almost all of the time, and that includes your grass. Chlorophyll is what is absorbing most of the visible light spectrum to be converted into the energy that the plant needs during photosynthesis, but it doesn't usually absorb green light, and so it reflects it back to us. It's bouncing back, and that's why it's what we see. Here's how that impacts you. If your lawn is green, that's a really good sign that photosynthesis is occurring and it's relatively healthy. They're like, they're like chlorophyll, more like borophyll, more like Stevie Wonder singing my sherry amorophyll. Because this pigment is the color of life, absorbing white light, but bouncing green back to our sight. That being said, just as certain nutrients make us put on weight or make our hair and our nails really strong, certain nutrients impact the health and success of your turf as well. The primary macronutrient that is associated with making your grass green and making it grow is nitrogen. On a bag of fertilizer, when you have those three numbers that are showed and codified as the content and quality of the fertilizer, that first one is your nitrogen. For example, a 2403 is a high nitrogen fertilizer. Nitrogen-based fertilizer is usually applied to a lawn throughout the growing season at different levels depending on the time of the year and the environmental impacts. Remember, grass is green when it's healthy and happy, and for fescue it is at its healthiest and happiest during the spring and the fall, so this is usually when the most nitrogen is being applied. For the most part, nitrogen applications should mirror this ebb and flow in terms of the grass's natural desire to be growing or be green, or if it just wants to be dormant instead. This is because nitrogen is not only associated with making the grass have a better color, but it's also associated with its growth rate. And during the summer with fescue, when it's stressed out and doesn't really want to do anything, you don't want to be forcing it to do something that it's not really suited for. Instead, iron is used a lot of the time as kind of a substitute for this nitrogen because it doesn't have as much direct impact on growth rates and other factors as does nitrogen, but iron still gives a good increase to that green color. Now, not all greens are the same. Between different species of grass, you can have a really deep, almost bluish green, like in bluegrass and even fescue, or you can have kind of a lighter, paler green, like your warm season grasses, zoysia and bermuda. But no matter what the shade of green, green is obviously always going to be your goal. Like we said before, a healthy lawn is a green lawn. So any deviations in color that aren't green are usually going to be a cause for concern because it might be an indication that something's not quite right with your grass. So we're going to break down three more colors for you, red, purple, and brown, so we can identify where any issues might be if you're seeing any of these colors. So let's start off with red because it's pretty straightforward and not very common. red grass like this, it's most likely a sign of a fungal issue. 
Red and pink tendrils that are intermixed with the lawn are a sign of red thread disease. While it isn't technically the grass itself that's turning red, it is very visible from far away and especially up close, and the name is quite literal in terms of these red threads that develop within the turf. Now, don't worry. While brown patch and a lot of other fungal issues can be very damaging very quickly to your turf, red thread's more of a cosmetic issue. Some patches of the grass where these red threads are will turn a light brown color which is why it'll look pink overall but it's mostly just sick it's not dead unless it's a really extreme case so 99% of the time it will just grow itself out and bounce back before we get too far into summer Typically, red thread is used as a diagnostic tool by turf management professionals more than anything else. It can be a sign that there are conditions in the lawn that are going to make it more prone to other more serious fungal issues down the road and later into the summer. These can be, you know, really thick growth that prevent good airflow from drying out the base of that plant. It can also be a sign that there are really high humidity and temperature situations that are kind of cooking that fungus in there. So that's always going to be something that is used to kind of say, okay, red thread is going to grow itself out, but we should talk about the higher risk of brown patch that could be correlated with it. The other thing that's good to know about it is that often red thread is associated with low nitrogen levels. So it can be an indication that there might be something lacking in the soil system that is either causing a low retention of those nutrients or just a lack of availability in the first place. Either way, while seeing red in the grass can be pretty startling to a homeowner that isn't familiar with it, it's not something that is necessarily a giant red flag or red alarm itself. Seeing purple in your grass, however, might be. While there are some ornamental grasses that are intentionally purple, fescue isn't one of them. A purple lawn, especially a fescue lawn, is a red flag because this is usually the first sign of heat stress. And that means that it is one step away from a complete meltdown. Because fescue is a cool season grass, it's at its lowest and toughest point during the summer, especially once temperatures get up into the 80s and the 90s. This can be significantly and quickly exacerbated by a lack of proper watering on the part of the homeowner, by any kind of drought conditions, or by a lack of shade on the property. Unless a fescue lawn is well established with a strong root system and a good fertilizer program and is being tended to properly with the correct type and amount of watering, it's at very high risk of heat stress in our area during those summer months because we experience really unideal temperatures. When it gets hot and flustered like this, instead of just letting itself die, it shuts down. It quits out, it says, nope, not gonna do this anymore, and it goes into dormancy. And this process of of struggling and shutting down is what we refer to as heat stress. This intermediary period where a nice green healthy spring lawn is on its way into turning into a brown dormant possibly even dead summer lawn is when that lawn turns purple. It's kind of that transition period and that's why it's kind of the wait turn back and go fix something point for homeowners because you do have a chance to bring it back to green if you see it turning purple. Purple is generally the color of stress no matter what. It's when the lawn is not photosynthesizing the way that it needs to, right? We talked about how green is what you really identify with good proper photosynthesis. So the less green it is, the more it's probably in trouble and trying to focus on its energy being used towards something else. So while there are other stress circumstances that can cause you to see a little bit of that purple color, 99% of the time in fescue lawns, it's seen during the summer and it's identified with a heat problem. If you see your fescue lawn turning purple, you have two options turn up the water and do a rain dance or let it go. For most people, there's this fine line between wanting to have a green lawn and not wanting to spend hundreds of dollars a month on their water bill just for taking care of the grass. But if it's hot outside, your fescue doesn't have to pay for the water bill and it's gonna shut down. So more than anything, it's something to keep in mind and it's a really good tool for any homeowner or professional to use to identify a problem before it really becomes a problem. So of course, I'm going to end on the worst note of all, brown grass. Of all these different colors of grass that we're talking about, brown is the one that should be met with the most concern. Across the board, 
most of the time brown is associated with death in any plant. Now this could be fake death. It could be that winter dormancy that is typical for warm season grasses like zoysia and bermuda and others. But when we're talking about a fescue lawn or a warm season lawn during the warm season, you do not want to see any brown. Like we just talked about, when a lawn goes from green to purple, the next step is brown in heat stress situations. When a lawn goes completely brown from the heat, this is when it's shut down and gone dormant. For a fescue lawn, this summer dormancy, this brown from heat, is comparable to the winter dormancy that warm season grasses go through. It's not dead. It, it can be if we hit a really hard drought and even through that dormancy it continues to struggle, it can die. But you can also see some of it bounce back if we get a good rain shortly after it goes dormant. But it's just that top growth most of the time that's curled up and gone brown because it's basically the plant's last ditch effort to reserve its resources for those roots and that basal growth. So even if your lawn has gone brown from summer heat dormancy, you can bring it back at least partially with better watering or a break in the weather. It just needs some critical care as quickly as possible. While heat stress, especially this year, is a common cause of brown in a lawn, so is fungus. Not just that red thread that we talked about earlier in this video as well, but more serious ones like brown patch and others. These diseases are the result of overactive fungi populations doing foliar damage to the plant. As these diseases take hold, they often manifest as blotches or patches or rings of brown within the otherwise green lawn. A lot of these diseases can be pretty devastating to turf. They can spread quickly and they usually don't self-regulate and resolve on their own unless it's something like red thread. So if you're seeing brown on the lawn and it might be heat stress or it might be fungus and you just can't tell, call a turf management professional. The sooner you're able to intervene one way or the other, the better it's going to be for your lawn in the long run. Now, heat stress and fungus, those are my two biggest causes of browning in the lawn, especially during the summer, and we did a whole video on how to tell the difference between the two, but there are multiple other causes of brown that could occur, so I'm going to list those out for you really quickly. You could have a shallow obstacle below ground that's impeding root development from occurring. Grubs or other insects could be feeding on your grass and doing root or foliar damage. A chemical treatment could have been mixed or applied improperly. That's why you have to read the label. You could have had large areas of weeds in the lawn that were intentionally treated and now have died. Larger heavy objects like tarps, tools, or bricks were left on the lawn for extended periods of time. Or the lawn has been mowed improperly and is undergoing stress because too much growth was taken off at once. There are even more potential reasons that your grass could be turning brown than just the ones that we've discussed here. So if there's one that you've had an experience with but I didn't mention, be sure to comment below and let me know. Either way, with so many different causes and grass being a plant that can't talk unlike others. We'll start again on the left feed hand and- me. I beg your pardon? Feed me. Tui, you talked. Feed. It's really important for any DIY homeowner or turf management professional to have a little Sherlock Holmes in them and be able to investigate and identify the real cause for any kind of concern. Well, as always, I sure do appreciate you guys taking the time to learn about grass with us and improve the way that you are caring for your lawn. Like I said before, be sure to stay tuned for part two of this two-part series on the colors of a lawn that's going to be coming out next Tuesday. I'm going to be breaking down yellow grass, black grass, white grass, and blue grass. But be sure to comment below if there's a color between this video and that one that you have seen but isn't mentioned. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we will talk to you again later. Take care. I'm going to be breaking down I'll wait.